Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. All Things Middle Earth here with five things you need to know before playing the Return to Moria. Now I've played this game for about 25 to 30 hours in the last two or three days, which again is not a huge amount over a long period of time, but in a few days it's a lot of gameplay. And I've learned a lot of things through trial and error and I wanna share those with you guys so you can have the best experience possible. These are very beginner friendly, so if you're brand new to this type of genre, you don't have to worry, it's going to be very, very simple, but they are gonna get more complex as we go on, especially the very last tip, so make sure you stay tuned for that. And as always, comment down below if you guys have ideas for videos you'd like to see covered in the future or tips and tricks you'd like to share with the community. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right, the first tip, and this is probably the most self-explanatory one there is, but I'm going to say it at the beginning because I feel like it's so important, and that is to mine, kill, and gather everything that you come across. Now, except for stone, the very most basic resource type, which is this thing right here that says rock, everything else in the game I have run out of or almost run out of at some point. And the last thing you wanna do when you're trying to progress is have to go out and scavenge for something specifically, whether it be food by hunting animals, whether you're out of iron and you have to go find uh, an iron vein or whatever it is, or iron ore, it's just annoying. So if when you're playing, if you're like me, the tendency is to just kind of run around and explore and go from cave to cave, you slow down a little bit and try and mine things out. Or again, if you find a new building that you see, if you go into the buildings, you're gonna see different things in the ground you can scavenge or seeing an animal down there like you see right here. If I go down there and take that out, I'm gonna get some, some raw meat is the big thing you want there. But just doing that a little bit more often is going to help you not run out of stuff or not have to waste time when you should be progressing. If you're playing with friends, you can also divvy these things up. So one person is in charge of taking out animals and gathering the food. One person does more of the mining, or maybe two people do the mining, and another person is going into more ruined structures and gathering the kind of remains of things, which might just be scraps of wood or cloth or whatever, but all of it comes in handy at some point. So make sure you gather everything that you see. Now, tip number two is going to build off that tip because if you've done the first tip a lot and you've gotten a lot of raw meat, this will be so, so convenient for you. And that is to build an oven as soon as humanly possible. Now the oven is gonna cost you three copper, 20 stone, 25 wood scraps, and five coal, which is not a whole lot. And really the first thing you're gonna have to wait on is gonna be copper. So as soon as you find copper and can get that smelted down, do so and build an oven. Now the difference between the oven and just making things, making meals on your meal table in the stone hearth is if you make things in stone hearth, they get put on the table, you can't carry them with you, and eventually they'll go bad if you leave them on the table. So it's great when you're here and you want to eat and you're in the base, but otherwise, if you're out and about, if you're mining, if you're fighting and you wanna regen health or you're hungry or whatever it is, you need to bring food with you. So that's where the oven comes in. The oven allows you to make rations. Now, things like Lambes are very complex rations, which heal your health all the way um, and your hunger, which is very, very good. So if you can have stacks of Lambes, you're gonna be set. But something very simple like this built on just takes the raw meat that you get from killing the animals or different different wolves or whatever it is. Uh, so if you have a ton of the raw meat, you can just make a few sacks of this. If everyone in your party has a stack or two, you're gonna be able to mine a lot longer or fight or explore, whatever it is, without having to go back because people are out of health or they're starving to death and starting to take damage. Uh, it's, it's very, very annoying to have to deal with that. So make an oven as soon as you can and make as many rations as you can for your party. And the next tip should be self-explanatory as well, but I wanna show you guys when you know if you're behind the ball on this one. And the tip is to upgrade your gear as frequently as possible. Now, again, I know it sounds self-explanatory, but if you look at your gear, really, whether it's weapons, uh, whatever uh, armor you're wearing, they have these tier ratings. So this is the Iron Hills armor, it says tier one. There are things that, uh, like this Airborne Ringmail is tier two and so on and so forth. So. The different tiers dictate how much they protect you or how much damage they do. And I'll put some stuff on the screen so you guys can see it. But when you are fighting enemies, there's going to be a color associated with the number you're dealing damage. Now, if the number is gold, we're gonna call that above average damage. If it is white, that is going to be kind of normal. You're on par with them. And if it is kind of dark and grayed out, that means it is below average and you're fighting with a weapon that's probably not up to par for the area that you're in. So. Again, if you find yourself and it's there, it's things are starting to hit dark gray, uh, you're really struggling, you're dying, whatever it is, that just means that you need to upgrade your stuff. So if you're using the iron sword still, for example, that's tier one, it might be time to look at making something that's going to be tier two or even tier three if you can get that far. So make sure you upgrade as much as you can and be aware if, you're, if things are still gold, you're fine. But if they start to go white or even gray, you really need to focus on upgrading. Now, the next tip is to bring supplies with you wherever you go. You can build a camp earth 
and a map stone. The map stone is the way to fast travel from your location. So right now we're in one of my bases here in the Mines of Moria. We can go back up to the Elven Hall or we can go really anywhere that has another map stone that is active. Now this is not something that I did at the beginning and I wish I would have because it's come in so handy. But in your inventory, when you're out and about, if you carry the resources, the really big one you're gonna need is gonna be black diamonds, which you will get more of as you play, either by looting treasure boxes or killing orcs, you get more that way. Uh, if you carry three black diamonds and the other kind of basic resources to make a camp earth and a, uh, a map stone, I'll show you here, we need three black diamonds and 20 stone for the map stone and for the camp earth, which allows you to build stuff in any area. You need wood scraps, stone, and coal. If you carry those items with you in your inventory and you're out just mining as, as deep as can possibly be and you're low on health, your armor needs repaired, maybe a base is being attacked, maybe you're hungry, whatever it is, you can put down the camp hearth, you can put down the map stone and immediately teleport to your base, whatever your main base is. And then when you're ready, you can go right back to where you were without having to run back all that way and risk dying. It's very, very convenient and something that I wish I had done days ago, but I guess better late than never. Now, the fifth and final tip for this video is to make and use a shield as much as possible. Again, might seem self-explanatory. You can build a shield as soon as you're in your first camp. All you need is iron and wood scraps, and the shields are amazing in this game. Seriously, almost broken. All you do with the shields is use a secondary action button to hold your shield up, and, and you will block pretty much any attack that comes your way. So you can hold your sword and your uh, shield at the same time and fight people, and you're gonna get really used to timing. So when you're getting attacked, you just click to block or you hold on your controller to block and then attack. It's it's very, it's pretty good. It's not very slow. So if you get used to it, you can pretty much take no damage. Again, as long as you're doing enough to not let the goblins pile up too much, uh, the shield is seriously, seriously broken. And I would I would suggest using one if you have not already. Even, you know, sometimes there I use my torch and my sword, but if it's, if unless you literally cannot see without it, I would say use the shield as much as possible. But that is gonna do it for a video on some tips and tricks in the Return to Moria to help you have a better experience. Again, a lot of these are very self-explanatory or basic as you get going, but if I had heard these things before I started playing, I would have definitely saved myself a lot of time having to go back and re-scavenge for things or just taking longer to get through errors, whatever it is. So hopefully you guys found these helpful. Let me know down below if you have ideas for things that players should be doing in addition to these tips, as well as just other ideas you'd like to see covered in the videos, like how to do certain things in the game. Let me know down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.